Hello, I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead APD Expert Plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. How is everybody today? Glad everybody's here. And do me a favor, let me know how the audio sounds today. We are doing something a little different. Thank you, ma'am. We are doing something a little bit different today. We have a different microphone, so we're kind of playing with things and checking it out. We have to do something here in a couple of weeks, and we wanted to try the lavalier light. Well, yeah the lavalier mic and see how it is. How is everybody doing today? I hope y'all are doing great. Did everybody have a good weekend? And as you can see, we've already got a pen coming in there. We are doing a survey. We'd like to get some information from you. If you take the assessment, you have a chance at winning a, an, an unimaginable prize. First of all, if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope that you came here and, and found what you're looking for. If you are actually looking for how to repair a plumbing thing, you may want to get out of this live stream because this, if it was recommended to you, it may have been previously recorded. But what you need to do is go over to the channel. Let me fix this right here real quick, make it be quiet. Uh, what you need to do is jump over to the channel search what you're looking for, and you will find it over there. But if you're here on purpose, if you're here because you want to find out more about getting into the trades, becoming a better tradesman, starting your own company, or getting the right tools in your toolbox to help you grow your business using social media, man, you're in the right spot. And you may want to hang out because, man, we got great apprentices in here, people that want to get into the trades, tradesmen, company owners, there's all kinds of things in here. First of all, though, I want to jump into the chat and let me kind of move something around real quick. Uh, we're going to jump into the chat and say hello to some people, see how everybody is doing. But first of all, I'm going to go right there, right here, and I'm going to pull this up so I see everything going on. All right. Ah, there we go. Looky there. Turn that down so we're good to go. So, in the chat, how's everybody doing today? First of all, Alex Z, good to see you. How is everything? And there is the link that I talked to y'all about a while ago. If you'll go to the tradesacademy.com slash survey, uh, man, you got a chance at winning just magic prizes. Mason Masick, Good to have you in the house. Mr. Virgil Hatfield, helping me get everything in here and set up, and I love it. Mr. Nick Oinoian, I hope I said that right. Nick, how are you? The man, the myth, the legend. I hope you're talking about yourself, not me, because, and I'm just a plumber. Uh, Amber Mendoza says, happy Monday trade show tuber church. Good to have her in here as always. Max is doing fantastic. What a great way to start the day. Can he see his comments? Peyton, sometimes I can. Sometimes I can't. Uh, American 0828A, American 0828. I like that your videos are lots of help and very informative. Great job. Keep up the great work. And I'm not doing a separate forum today where we answer questions over there. Instead, I'd really like you all to go to the survey, just answer some questions real quick. You might be able to pop up another live stream and jump over there. Oh, we got some good people in here. I'm liking this. 
Says, hey, getting into plumbing, got a pack out. Is that a smart move? Well, I don't know if you can see mine back here in the corner. Actually, if I jump over to this camera right here, uh, you can see my pack out right over here. Yeah, I think it's a great move. I love those things. But if you're just getting into the plumbing, man, that might be a little much to start out. Here's the thing. You're not going to have a ton of tools in the beginning. It's something you may want to think about. That's a big investment, but it may be great to start out with the base and understand like you got a toolbox on wheels. You can roll it around. I love the pack out, man. I think it is phenomenal. So, dude, if you can start there, good luck. Yes, it is a smart move. Mr. Thomas Smith, hello to you. How is everything? Man, every time I roll this thing, it jumps a mile. And Silky86 says, I am sounding good. So we're trying a new level here, Mike, and, and I'm going to tell you all why. I'm, I've got to do a satellite media tour in about a week. We will have about 20 nationwide morning shows, morning news shows, uh, different things like that. And they don't want the microphone here. So we pulled the mics out of the way, as you see. Everything else looks good here. And... We just wanted to see how it sounded tonight. So I'll go and listen to this tomorrow. I'll also send them a link and say, this is what we came up with yesterday. Do you like it? And all we've got is this little lavalier mic right there. They can still see it, but it's not anything bad. James Cardona, I, I saw this message over here a while ago, so I wanted to get down to it. James Cardona, number one, congratulations. And, and people ask me, like, Roger, do you consider the mechanics a trade? Yes, I do. It's not a construction trade, but it's one of those it's one of those things that you can go learn. You can have an excellent living for years, never have to go to college, never owe anybody for student debt. So yes, I love it. I think being an automotive mechanic is fantastic. And man, as cars change and they rely more on computers, you younger, newer mechanics are going to be so much better than a lot of the older guys. So good luck. Kevin M, I am having a great day. Uh, actually, just, man, running like crazy, which is normal for me, but it's fantastic. Uh, Dalton Hatch says, excited for this one. A journeyman from San Antonio, another Texas brother. You got to love it. Uh, do you see if someone unsubscribes? You know, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You don't get a notification as to who it is. It tells you how many people come and go. So yeah, you can, it, but it, that, it's not going to tell me that you sub, you unsubscribed or anything like that. Uh, Devin Eckleclamp, how are you? What is it like being a plumber? Is there anything wish you could do different? You know, I got to tell you, Devin, uh, uh, number one, I love plumbing. And there's not a lot of bad things about it. Don't get me wrong. You have to... You know, you, you got to get dirty every now and then. You got to get muddy every now and then. You you might get poop on you every now and then. It doesn't happen very often. And there's so many people that freak out about that. They're like, I'm never going to be a plumber. And it's like, you know what? It, it's nothing you can't wash off of you. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want it in my eye or my mouth or anything like that. But to be honest, it, it's, it does not happen there as often as people think. Uh, how did you go about deciding what trade you wanted to go with? You know, that is something that I actually teach in the Trades Academy that, that we're talking about there. That's the scroller running along the bottom of the page. And here's what I want to tell you is, I don't know if you really pick a trade or the trade picks you. And we talk about that into the getting into the trades program because finding out the right trade for you is really a big deal. I would not have enjoyed being an electrician. So, man, it's kind of tough for me to say. Uh I love plumbing and I didn't pick it. Uh, it picked me, one of my best friends, his father and his three older brothers were plumbers. And he said, you know, hey, look, man, they make great money. They love what they do. I ended up calling one of them and said, hey man, I want a job. And, and when I got it, it was really pretty cool. I enjoyed, I enjoyed building things. And then later, man, I enjoyed fixing things and, and, Mafel Monfeco, uh, uh, answering it right here for you all at the same time. So yeah, it. Uh, I love plumbing. I enjoy what I do. I, th I think plumbing is great because if you look at it, and I talk about this a lot into the getting in the trades program, if you look around the world today, 
it is either built by or repaired by construction tradespeople. And it's always going to be that way. And with 900,000 open jobs and less people getting in the trades every year, man, it's, it's a great deal. Uh, B.A. McCoy, hope I said that right. Uh, McCoy, maybe. Transferred from carpentry to labor. Now, I don't know if you transferred into the carpenters program, union, plumbing, whatever it is, but man, fantastic. And big inspiration. Look, y'all inspire me to do what I do, and I hope y'all know that. I literally, look, I love what I do. I'm a plumber. I have fun. I get to do social media. I get to teach people about the trades, about the right way to do things and the wrong way to do things. But I got to tell you, man, thank you all for all y'all do. So Grayson says, howdy, Tuber Turds. Good to have you all in here. Part of the community, part of the tribe, part of everything that we do. And I love that. Uh, Chase Hutchinson says, been trying to get into pop fitters for over a year with no luck. Any tips to help? You know, Chase, here's the deal. You've got to understand what they're looking for. You've got to understand that they have a, they have a need. They need people that want to come in. They want to learn. They want to grow. They want, they want to help the union get better. Uh, I'm assuming that's what you're talk, talking about, trying to get into the pipe fitters union. They want to help the union get better. They have needs at the local level, but you've got to come in and convey to them, what kind of person you are. And they've got to see you as somebody that can benefit them, not just somebody they need to give a job to. They need to see you as someone that will benefit having you, it'll benefit them by having you as part of their organization. Blake Casper, good to see you. Adrian Vallejo says, currently an apprentice, open shop service. You start plumbing school in September. So Adrian, I'm gonna ask you, what plumbing school are you starting? Are you actually going to like a trade school? Are you joining a union, joining a community college, vocational tech? What is it you're doing? Salty Siren, congrats. Thank you so much. Or, or I guess that you're actually congratulating Adrian. Uh, Billy Casper, I'm not going to give you a shout out. Sorry, I don't do that. But I will give a shout out to Miss Christina Smallhorn. Good to have you in here. Look, this is my girl. This lady knows what she's doing on YouTube. If you are not subscribed to her, you definitely should be. Uh, the cool thing about her, she just went over 100,000 subs on her YouTube channel. And Christina has just been added as a moderator. Christina, if you want to put your, the link to your YouTube channel in there, that would be great. Guys, she talks about real estate, but I'm telling you what, she's passionate about it, she's good about it, and she loves what she does, so fantastic. Jotaro Cujo says, I had a clogged toilet upstairs in my home. Uh, let me get this. It says, uh, tried everything to get it unclogged, and I flushed it once, and water started dripping from the air vent downstairs. Uh, you probably, it was probably clogged up so bad that you, you pushed out the wax that leaked up under your toilet. You will probably have to cut the ceiling open below it to check and make sure. What you might try first is pulling and resetting the toilet, but you're going to have to unclog it. So you're either going to need like a closet auger, uh, a, sm a small snake, something like that. Maybe, maybe even one of those air hammers. Man, I got to tell you, I love those. American 020828 says the plumbing disaster videos are great. Now, we have fun doing those. Don't get me wrong. Nobody likes plumbing disasters. But when you see plumbing in other countries and it's just really not what we're doing here, it, 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 can, it can be tough. There's Regifo says high, school, high schools are teaching diesel mechanics and those kids are making 30 bucks an hour. They're in the man in Southern California. <clears throat> Bez, here, here's what I want to tell you is Texas just passed a law in the 87th legislature. They're going to start bringing plumbing into the high schools. And I think it is phenomenal because if a, if a person can go to high school for a couple of years and get enough hours to, to put them on the path of a tradesman, once they get their tradesman license, they're making 50 grand a year. Uh, not quite 30 bucks an hour, but 25 an hour right now is what we pay tradesmen. <clears throat> and I think it's, well, I think it'll be great because we'll get more people into the trades and they're coming right out of high school making bank.
The next one here. Salty Siren says, had a roommate who clogged his toilet instead of using a plunger. Tossed an entire, entire roll of paper towels at it. Yeah, that doesn't help. Okay, just checking. You know, you, when you ask, hey, does it show you unsubscribers? Thought maybe you might be. Uh, Mafel, man, I hope you don't. Well, see, Ahmad says, who do you think makes the most money, commercial or residential painter? <clears throat> Good question. I would say residential, just because to me, commercial is going to be bulk. You know, it's going to be big jobs. Get in there and hurry. It's not just going to be like you and your crew. It's going to be a whole bunch of crews. My thing is residential, and those guys make bank, and if they get a good reputation, I used to know a painter that specialized in, in custom. He could uh, he could do faux patterns on walls, so he could take a wall and make it look like a marble wall. And when you start getting to where you can specialize and tweak and modify and do stuff like that, I think it's fantastic. Don no, Knuckle Camps has just recently got his accelerated welding certificate. One step closer to you being an underwater welder, which is your dream job. You know what, Devin, or where are you going to school at? Because that is something that I wanted to do. I actually checked into it two or three times. There is supposed to be a great training program down in Houston, Texas. And guys, I got to tell you, look, any time you can specialize in something, you have the opportunity to make more money. Now, we talk about this in the Trades Academy, but it's not just becoming a plumber. It's becoming a med gas plumber, a water su supply protection specialist, a multi-purpose residential fire protection system specialist. Anytime you can special in things, it's great. So you can become a welder. You can actually get a job welding during the day if you really want to. But man, those guys make bank and they fly them out to oil rigs, fly them out to stuff like that. And I got to tell you, I'm a scuba diver. I love being underwater. It is just one of the greatest things on earth. It, it's fun. Salty Siren, I did not see one collapse in China. I saw the the big hotel that they're having problems with and they're still looking for bodies down in Florida. So, man, it's tough. Says so Bike Hack says, how safe do you think trades is from automation? Man, I, I got to tell you that that's part of the reason that I got into the trades back in 1980. One of my best friends literally was telling me, hey, look, not only about his three brothers and his dad, but he said, this is something robots will never be able to do. And he's he's right. So we, we man, they're st still, robots can't get out and do the things that we do. Now, they may be able to one day, but we're not there yet. And actually, we're a long way from it. Uh, Peyton, I was 16 years old when I got into plumbing. Timothy Hewitt, you're more than welcome. Uh, man, you don't have to go anywhere. You can hang around. You might hear other people ask questions that actually benefit you too. And anybody, if you remember to, please go up to the top of the chat. There is a link to the survey there. Man, it's just to ask you questions. Y'all know that I'm working on a digital course. We're building it out as we go. We have people all the time getting in it. Uh, and, and man, this is just cool because I can't wait till we start the lives. So we're going to do Zoom calls with the students that are in there to actually, man, just be able to talk to them each month, find out what they're doing, what are they learning, or, or are they getting the information they need, or do they need something else? And, and then once a month, we're going to do all the different platforms, meaning getting into the trades, becoming a better tradesman, starting your own company, and learning to use social media to grow your business. And we're going to have everybody in there at once so they can all communicate together. But I'm going to get in there each week and talk a little bit about each one of them, or I'm sorry, each month. So, man, that is fantastic. I, I love it. And that's what it's all about. It's about answering people and helping people. CC, man, I, I love what I do. So, man, you ain't got any problem. I'm, I'm going good. And I already answered that one for you, Seth. <clears throat> and it jumped on me again. Where did we go? There we go. Frederick says, I'm a journeyman plumber in the state of Texas. Been wanting to get my friends to get in the trades. Love your YouTube content because it's inspirational to push your agenda. So, Frederick, what I would tell you is go check out the, the, well, the link up top, the Trades Academy. That is 
a platform we're working on nationwide to help recruit people into the trades. Man, go in there and check it out. Share it with people. Uh, we've got some free giveaways, and I don't know. Like, the bonuses may be up right now. Uh, but, man, it's a great place to learn about getting into the trades. Not just one trade, any trade. Because me and you may love plumbing, but there may be somebody else that is like, look, I could just never work on pipe that, that carried poop through it. And, you know, I'm not going to do it. And, man, some people, it scares the heck out of them. Steve, lots of demand for HVAC in the Northwest, 110 Washington. Lots of heat pumps going right now. Well, isn't that true? Uh, man, I bet they are selling like crazy up there right now. I heard that earlier. It's supposed to be like 115 in Seattle, and most of the houses up there don't have HVAC systems. Man, that's got to be tough. There's Miss Christina Smallhorn. Uh, if you want information on affordable housing options, guys, go check her out. Subscribe. Man, go back and watch what she does. Uh, so much to learn over there. And she just, she has a heart of gold. So that's why I love helping tell people about her. And there's the not bot. Got the link to the survey in there. Wonderful as always. Okay, so I like this. Adrian says, receiving training through the Cincinnati Master Plumbers Association for your training program. That is so cool. Uh can getting into the military be a good way to become a plumber? Yeah, actually it can. Uh, Gregorio, here, here's the deal. I've actually had people come to work for me that had some construction experience in the military doing plumbing, as a matter of fact, and we were able to get that documented by their CO. So I was able to help them get hours towards their license, and it works great. And there's the other link. If you know anybody that wants to get into the trades, send this straight to them and just say, look, th this is where you need to be. This is what you need to check out. Panda Butt says, when I turn the washing machine on, the water doesn't drain. It comes up through the sink and it stinks horribly. Any advice? Yeah, you've got a clog somewhere. Uh, whether you unclog it yourself, get a small sewer machine, run it through there, call a plumber, whichever way it may go, you've got a clog there and you need to get it taken care of. Do I recommend any plumbing schools in Austin? You know, I think it, it really depends on what kind of plumber you want to be. And I say that because if you want to be a residential service plumber, most of the unions don't teach that. Now, Austin's got a pretty good training program. I would call them and ask them. But if you'll like go down in the description, click on the link to my free mini course, it'll help you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. You, I would need to know that before I could tell you about anything at all. If you want to do commercial, the union is not bad. Uh, and tell, <laughs> get in there and find out what kind of plumber you want to be. Tell them and ask them if they train on that, and it'll help you out. Uh, says, uh, have, you, have you ever heard of a fellow plumber, YouTuber Kenny Maltov? You and him are the only great plumbing channels that I watch for plumbing. Number one, man, I... S-H-S-H, S-H-2, uh, sh -sh -sh two. I like that. Yeah, I, I know, Kenny, we've actually talked. We've talked about collabing. We've talked about doing some different things. Look, I, I like Kenny. I remember, man, when I first started YouTube, Kenny, Kenny Maltov, uh, Plumber Parts, and Stephen Lavamaneri were all bigger channels than me, and I thought, man, they are huge. I will never catch them. Luckily, I've grown, and it's been pretty good. <clears throat> Ouch, I like it. Thank you for being an amazing plumber. And I just, I love what I do, guys. And that's what it's all about. And that's why I, I've put together this getting into the trades program. If you love what you do, you're, you're going to have fun at it. You're going to stick with it a long time. And one of the biggest questions I get, and, and I mean, this is almost an everyday question. What trade can I make the most money in? And, and there's only one answer. It is the one that you enjoy the most. Because number one, you're going to stick with it more. You're going to want to do it more. You're going to want to learn more about it. And it can literally, finding the right trade can change the rest of your life and make it amazing. I like this. Raphael Ponce. Raphael, congratulations, first of all. Hey, Roger, went to my first interview and I got the job. Start my apprenticeship next week. Thanks for the advice. Raphael, my question to you is, did you watch my videos about interviewing and the interview process? and things like that, because I've taken that information and gone even deeper with it. 
to teach people the things, you know, what is the interviewer looking for? What is he thinking? What's going through his mind? And when you can understand that, it is fantastic. Summer Norris, hello to you. I hope everything's going well. Hudson Adventure says, one time I clogged the toilet, it was about to overflow when you unclogged it. Love watching your vids. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Devin says, went to the Minnesota Southeast State College. Good for you. Most useful certification for plumbing. It, you know, if you're in Texas, it's going to be your license. Uh, there's a lot of certification you get. Look, I'm a lead AP. Uh, I had the certification from Green Plumbers USA. Uh, I have every Texas master endorsement. And getting that master license is the biggest deal. It's, it's where it all starts. Once you get that, then you have the opportunity to move, grow, learn, and, and do other things, and it's really pretty cool. Javier Romero says, 21-year-old here, uh, last three years post high school has been filled with confusion. Well, isn't that the truth? Oops. Uh, been filled with confusion and what's next. I'm glad you found this channel. Now know what you want to do, plumbing instead of college. Shout out from Denver. Man, number one, I love that. Uh, guys, this is why we put together the, the, the entire Trades Academy, okay? Because there are people out there, and, and Javier, I want you to think about this. And I didn't realize it until I got interviewed by a lady up in New York, and she literally, she says, Roger, look, you have created a clear path into the trades, but not just a path in the trades. Cause look, I don't want to teach people to be plumbers, electricians, ACVAC techs. I want to teach people about all the trades and how to get in and become the very best tradesman. If you are just getting in the trades for the money, you're not going to like it. But if you get in because you love what you're doing, you're going to make great money all the way through it. <coughs> And you're going to make great money for the rest of your life. So it really is such a big deal. Uh, Nick Sperry says, for cover letters, should I say plumbing apprentice, assistant, or helper? Want to learn and be licensed. And, and we, we, again, we, we talk about this. Uh, call yourself an apprentice. Don't call yourself, uh, don't call yourself a licensee. Don't call yourself a helper, assistant, anything like that. You're applying for a job as a plumber's apprentice and you want to learn the trade. Isaiah 92 says, got my test for your C36 here in California on Friday, passed the legal. This is the second time, sorry, it jumped on me, uh, second time taking the test on the trade. Wish you luck, currently studying. Man, good luck to you. I hope it all goes well. Blue Collar Lifestyle, what kind of trades do you discuss? Man, in our program, we are literally talking everything from concrete, to glazing, to sheetrock, to carpet, to, to carpenters, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, roofing. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, 12, maybe 18 trades, eight, six, eight. Yeah, that, man, there's about 16 to 18 trades we cover. And, and look, I'm not teaching you to trade. Please do not get me wrong, guys. What I teach is whatever trades job you get, how do you become the best? How do you move up and make the most money? Because anybody can teach you how to join pipe. It's that mental mindset of how to sell yourself to the owner of your company, your foreman, your superintendent. If you've got your own company, how do you sell yourself to your customers? So there's a lot that I'm trying to teach people. I talk about all different trades. And, and also, man, one, one of the things that we're doing is we're giving them a link to the unions that can help them find a place all across the country. But also we're teaching people how to find those jobs, commercial, residential. Know who's hiring and get out there and get a job. Hey, I'm finally back. Eight-month electrical apprentice. Love your content. Thank you for referring to me, to Electrical U. Help me understand certain electrical stuff. Man, all I ask is that you go over and tell Dustin that I sent you over there. Uh, look, I love Dustin. I think he does a lot of great, a lot of great stuff. Uh, we've actually talked about collaborating together. I think it'd be good for both of us. But, man, I, I hope that 
I hope you tell him I sent you that direction. <clears throat> How is the work for local Texas plumbing unions? Uh, Plumber Works, it's actually good. Uh, you know, th there's, there's a lot going on. Texas is still building. Texas is still growing. So, man, as long as it's growing, it always going to be good to come here and go to work. So, Roger, what apprenticeship do you think is best? Residential new construction versus residential service. What apprenticeship would you recommend to your young people? You know, the, it, it goes back to what I'm talking about here. Go down in the link and click on the link to go to our free mini course. The reason being, it's going to explain commercial and residential to you. And you're going to make the most money wherever you want to be. I could go residential construction and move up to be one of the top superintendents of the company. And I could right now probably make anywhere from $150,000, $200,000 a year. Residential service. If I was out on a truck uh, with a company that paid well, has, has a good commission plan, things like that, I could make two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000 a year. What kind of money do you want to make? Well, it boils on what kind of work you do. But the good thing is, at the end of the day, you've got to find a job that you want to do. Because if you get in the wrong job, you're not going to like it. It doesn't matter how much money you make. You're going to end up getting pissed. And, and, and you're going to be like, look, I just don't want to do this. Happens all the time. <coughs> Everardo Garcia, how are you? I'm building a home in Mexico and was wondering what is a good size for your drainage. Five bathrooms. If, if you've got five bathrooms, you're definitely going to want to go a full four-inch line all the way out. Uh, I, you, you know, all I can say is Rapunzel 1212. I love that y'all like what I'm doing. Uh, nothing makes me feel better. Guys, thumbs up. I appreciate it. When you like these, when you share these, and I see somebody's already giving me a thumbs down, you know, it is what it, it's probably Christina Smallhorn. Where's she at? Uh, you know, the, the, the neat thing is getting in and doing things right. When you love what you do, you have fun at it, you tell people about it, and you help recruit people to it, you know, people are going to love it. You're going to get more thumbs up. You're going to get more likes. You're going to get more shares. When people share this, it tells the YouTube algorithm, hey, there's something good here because people like it enough to share it. And, man, that, that's pretty neat. So, Rapunzel1212, thank you very much. Daniel Whitfield, hello from Dallas, Texas. Uh, man, I actually called over to London. I know they're having a big fatberg problem over there. I wanted to go over there and video it, you know, climb down in the sewers under London. Now it looks like I'm going to be climbing into the sewers here in Dallas, so I'm working on a deal there. They told me in London it would take 14-day quarantine just to fly in. I'm like, dude, come on. Carlos Villacorta says, I'm thinking about becoming a plumber, 17 years old. Also, your dad is a plumber, so he can help you out. Man, that is fantastic. I do. I love that. I love that you want to follow in your father's footsteps. But, man, the cool thing about it is just the fact that you would want to be a plumber. And at this age, you're really lucky because you can watch YouTube. You can do things me and your father couldn't do. We did not have access to stuff like this. So, man, I am happy for you. Fredericks has just finished your survey. Can't wait to receive more helpful information. Frederick, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. And man, the, the, and look, as you can tell, it didn't take very long. Uh, we're just trying to get information. We want to make sure, look, we want to make sure we're teaching people the things that are really going to help them. Now, I know what I had to learn to help me to move up. I joined the union in 97 as a journeyman. By 2000, I was a superintendent. I moved up from foreman to superintendent, and I joined the union in late 97. So really within two years, I was a superintendent. And the big thing for me is I knew that I could move up from there. I kept learning and growing, and, and it really paid off. So it was kind of cool. Michael Berrios says, question, is indeed worth going through for job apprenticeship opening? You know, I, I really don't think so on Indeed. Don't get me wrong. I think Indeed does a lot of good things, but I think for an apprenticeship, <clears throat> I think you said plumbing. Uh, well, you just said opening. So my thought is, number one, I would go into the description I'm talking about down below, find the free mini course, take it. It's going to help you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be or what kind of uh, 
what kind of trade person you want to be. Commercial, residential, service, new construction, union or non-union. Help you figure, figure that out. And then once you do that, then what I would do is start looking around and find out who all's hiring. And Michael, that, that's one thing. You may want to go fill out that survey too because we, we're talking about things like that into the, in the getting in the trades program. So if you go to thetradesacademy.com, check it out. That it's, it's a big deal. I love this. Panda Butt says, love your accent. Man, I'm Texas. I'm from Texas. I'm a Texan. I don't have an accent. Some of y'all do, though. Raphael says, yes, sir, your videos on what the interviewer is looking for really help me. I asked questions when he asked if I had questions, and it's all going to be worth the process. But, dude, I love that. Number one, thank you for sharing with me. Raphael, I, I think that the more prepared people are, we can walk in, we can get the better jobs, we can get more money, we know what questions to ask to let them know, look, I, I'm really going to come in here and do a good job. And I think that once they figure out you really do, I, I think it's good. Steve says, do plumbers not like putting in residential electric tankless? but they will gas tankless. I'm guessing because they aren't electricians. Steve, that actually has nothing to do with it. Uh, man, it, it's, it's, really, it, it's really funny. Uh, let me find it here. I am actually working on a video right now, looking at it, looking at the opportunity. Look, the, the, the Sable Eltron water heaters, I've installed those before. I like them. Uh, man, what we actually installed in one house, we installed two of them because the lady had rebuilt her shower. And I mean, put in like two, four, six, eight shower heads. And she was going just some little danky electric water heater. And I said, yeah, number one, you're, you're never going to get enough hot water. And she's like, oh, yes, I am. I put in eight, two, four, eight heads. I said, well, ma'am, I hate to tell you this. The water heater you have, I ain't going to push them. Uh, she was doing a remodel on the bathroom. I went up and looked at the bathroom, saw what all they did, and told her, well, number one, you're going to get scalded over here. You're going to get frozen over here, so it's not good anyway. But we ended up repopping her complete shower that they were just in the middle of building. And we added a second tankless water heater, the Stable Eltron. Never heard a problem. Jorico13 says, hey, Roger, plumber from Toronto, Canada. Uh, you have your G Pro and gas pipe fitter with the TSSA. What certifications do you feel a journeyman like myself should pursue going forward? You know, if hydronics is your goal, it, man, I would study anything and everything you can about radiant heat. Thanks, it's popular in your area. You know, down here where I'm at, slab leaks and, and leak detection, and that's one of the biggest problems we have. So I became really, really good at it. I started studying it and learning it and trying to figure out what's the best thing I can do. There were so many people down here paying other companies to do slab leaks and leak detection. I thought, why? This is something I can learn my own. So that's what I'm working on. What can you specialize in your area that maybe other people don't specialize in? Uh, is line work the best paying trade? Number one, in, in Blue Collar Lifestyle, I, I tell people all the time, look, the best paying trade is the one that you love the most because you'll put more time in, you'll want to work more hours, you will want to learn more about it to get better at it, and it's a vicious cycle. It's going to keep paying you more. Now, one of the best paying trades itself, just dollar for dollar, uh, the elevator installers. Man, those guys make bank elevator installers and repair. It is amazing. Isaac says, you should do a video on what to expect for the tradesman exam because I plan on going for your tradesman next year. You know, that would be a good video. Um, I actually need to call Lisa Hill and talk to her and find out what all I can do. Uh, any of y'all that know who Lisa Hill is, the executive director of the Texas State Board, do me a favor and send her a message. And you can go to, I mean, I'll put it in here. I ain't bashful watch this. And I'm, I'm gonna put that link in it, and I, you know, I put that in. That's probably not right. Let me do this. <clears throat> Try here. There we go. So, uh, yeah. See, I knew that that was wrong. 
So I'm going to put it right here. All right, so what I'm going to ask y'all is, look, if you would like to see a video like that, because I've tried getting her to come let me show the backflow display they've got, which is out of this world, uh, what I would say to do is go in there, go look for Lisa Hill, figure out how to get in touch with her. You can email her, you can call down her, you can do a bunch of things. But just say, oh my gosh, I really wish you'd let Roger make a video down there about the exams, the tradesmen, the backflow, whatever it is you'd like to see. Man, the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners has a great setup, and, and I really do. I like what they do. I just think that'd be great. Matt Bot says, go check it out right there. <clears throat> you know, Chillix Vibe, here's what I want to tell you is that is their business model. Hey, we train people, we have them buy their own van, then we feed work to them. They'll get a percentage of it. Not a bad deal. Isaac, man, trust me, if they'll let me in, I could go in depth on all of it. Cannon Plumbing and Drain says that they've been busy since day one. Look, I literally, my first year in business, we did almost a million dollars and we've been consistent right around there. Uh, 2019, we dropped down a little bit because of we were short getting good plumbers or had plumbers here that, that weren't that good for us. And now, man, we're, we're picking back up. We're running with less plumbers. We're doing better work. Uh, but man, I've got some good guys now. That makes all the difference in the world. Uh, recently got into the union and would love to leave New Jersey. Well, the good thing for you is Plumber Works, uh, man, you can, if, I don't know if you do commercial, residential, service, new construction or what, but you can pretty much leave and go anywhere you want. Oh, I love that ice water. <clears throat> Notbot says, hey, if you've got any feedback, if you've learned anything from us, from me, either through my videos, you're in one of my programs, any of that. Look, if you love it, if you've learned something, do me a favor, uh, go give us a review. The feedback is great. <clears throat> Good work does refer itself. It's amazing. Nicole Schluter says, I am currently doing a total hot water system renovation. The two buildings are 12 years old, cost 2.6 million, just mechanical. Shoddy workmanship when built. What is the most expensive repair you had to fix? You know, Nicole, I mean, I've done a lot of remodels and it sounds like that's what this is. Uh, you know, I've done DFW Airport was a $25 million terminal, I think, just our, just our portion of it. God, it may have actually been more than that. Uh, you know, Nicole, I, I've done commercial long enough that I've done a little bit of everything, <clears throat> but it's kind of tough. But and, and don't go wrong, that's not my company. Uh, that's companies I worked for before I started my own company. Isaac says, do you do new MW, do you do new residential? No. We don't do any new work. We do repair and remodel residential. Great. It's a, it's a nice profit margin. You get paid right now, so there's a lot of good things about it. Uh, I've done commercial work before. I've, I don't do it for my company. don't want to. You've got to wait too long to get paid, and to me, it's not just worth it. Uh, Cannon Plumbing and Drain says, Union Free, good for you. And those of y'all that have not been over to the subreddit, guys, you need to check it out. This is where we get some of our best pictures, our best videos, some of the best things we get for YouTube. And then it's from people like y'all. And, and what happens is when somebody like you sees something good or bad or whatever and take pictures of it or videos, go over to the subreddit and post it over there. Man, we love it. Okay, now you put residential or service, we do residential service. So we try not to do build, we try not to do commercial. We want to go in and literally help people fix the problems around their house. And that's what we specialize in and we're pretty good at it. Hector says, many thoughts on the Job Corps trade program, plan on going there to learn carpentry. <clears throat> Hector, look, I like anybody's program that is actually teaching people and helping them grow. Uh, I think it's a, a wonderful thing. Check it out. Tell me what you think. Uh, I've, I've met people, man, in the past that have gone through the Job Corps program. Anything, anybody that is willing to teach you and help you grow, it can be a good thing. 
So had a couple of roughs and can't wait for the July sun in Austin. Man, we, we had the July sun here just a few days ago. It was freaking hot. And, and then we wake up today, it's kind of rainy. All right, Townsend says, we'll be taking your Minnesota plumbing test soon. If not for your help, I would not be able. Rodney, number one, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Man, that's the kind of testimonials and stuff that we're looking for. So guys, if you've got a minute, just jump over there and man, Tell people what you learned from us because I really do want to teach people and help them. Jesse say what? Says Love Texas. Absolutely. ABM, AMB Plumbing says, hey, my shop class watches your videos. Well, number one, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Uh, where's your shop class at? Just curious. Is, is it your, when you say your shop, is it your office at the plumbing company or is it your shop class at the Union Hall? Or man, who is it? Just kind of curious. Ronnie Townsend says, we all study your videos. Great job. Thank you so much. Yeah. And guys, if you like this, share this with a friend. Just take a minute, go down in the bottom, click on the share button, uh, post it on your Facebook. And, and I'll tell you what, this is really cool. If you ever want me to give you a shout out, take like a picture of you with a monitor and be like, you know, hey, here, here I am doing this, uh, you know, learning plumbing. Uh, put a link to it. You, you can click the share on bottom. Man, when, when my people see it, we'll give you a shout out. Uh, it's pretty freaking cool. Okay, Parker Odell says, I'm in the computer repair trade. Should I leave the trade? Look, man, computer repairs are great. Uh, I spent a lot of money getting mine repaired. So I don't think you're going to have any problem uh, if you love it. And, and at the end of the day, think about what I was saying earlier, guys. If you love what you do, you're going to make good money at it because you're going to be passionate about it. You're going to want to learn more about it. You're going to want to tell more people about what you do. And it really does. It makes all the difference in the world. Javier Romero, man, the life work balance is what it is. Uh, how much do you want to work? How much do you want to grow? How much do you want to make? You've got to be very careful. Uh, it can cost you your family, which is not good. So, man, you, you just got to keep an eye on things. Atrex, how are you? Good to see you in here. Tyler Nickerson says, hey, Roger, I work for my local city gas municipality distribution, not service. What would you recommend for me to start a side business and how to start? Tyler, it really depends on where you're at. If you're in Texas and you've been doing a lot of gas and you're familiar with it, I'd say, man, get a job as a plumber. Uh, once you get your plumbing license, later you can start your own company. And guys, that's why I recommend some of the trades I do. Plumbing, electrical, HVAC, roofing, carpentry, carpet, painting, drywall. These are a lot of things that once you learn them and get good at them, you have the opportunity to open your own company. And this is one thing I talk about in the Getting in the Trades program in the Trades Academy. Know your end game. Know it from the very beginning. What do you want to do? Do you want to open your own company? And, and, and Tyler, I love this. I want to open my own company. What do I do? Find a trade that you love. Find a trade you're passionate about because you're going to do it for a long time and you're going to be great. Uh, Hector, I ha have heard about the Job Corps programs. I've never been in it, so I don't know that much about it. But, but I got to tell you, man, anytime you can get somebody to teach you a trade, you're doing good, especially if it's for free. That's why I like the idea of going to the union, going open shop, finding out what you want to do and how you do it, and then getting in there and making it happen. Room Slayer says, my father works at DFW Airport. That's fantastic. I worked out there for about five years. I did a remodel on A Terminal and E Terminal. Uh, worked under TD Mechanical and DSI. I had to think about that. Paul Kress says, greetings from Germany. Good to see you in here. In here. There's that link again, guys. This is a survey. If you would, please click on this. And you can still listen to me. Just open another tab. Go over there, answer the survey real quick. We're trying to get some more information for what all we're putting in the trades program. Not just the getting in the trades program, but becoming a better tradesman. Uh, starting your own business and growing your business with social media. Shark Scraper, another one, just dropped by to say hello and thank you for helping folks get in the trades. Shark Scraper, number one, good to see you in here. Guys, uh, again, here's another YouTube channel worth going over and checking out. I love that. Great seeing you in here, man. 
All right, where am I at? Right there. Steve says, what do you tell old school plumbers who refuse to use pecs and pro press and say that shoddy and lazy? Well, you say, you're right, but things change and there's an opportunity here to make more money because labor-wise we can put this in quicker. And man, I, I can't tell you it's, it's shoddy. I can't tell you any bad thing about it. I will tell you this, the only thing I don't like about pecs I prefer to go to Upanor because people that install pecs don't increase the size of the pipes and there's a flow restriction at the fittings and that part kills me. The Lord's Plumber says, been a plumber for 15 years on your own for the last 10. Fantastic. Love your videos. Uh, yo, guys, man, you, you love my videos because I love what I'm doing. If I hated what I was doing, I just sit up there and say, okay, look, guys, man, look, you can be a plumber, make money. There you go. That's all you need to know. Man, that's just not me. I am passionate about what I do. I think plumbing is one of, of the greatest trades there is. I think there's a lot of trades that can help people learn their way up. And, and my thought about that is you can learn your way up out of any situation in the world. You don't like where you live. You don't like the relationship you're in. You don't like the job you have. You don't like how much money you make. Learn your way up. Learn your way up into a trade. Learn your way up into a higher tax bracket. That's up to you. It's not up to anybody else. And don't tell me you can't do it. I'm going to call BS. Then Dan says, howdy. Greetings from the Netherlands. Good to have you in here. <coughs> okay. How did a vegan get in here? Amber Mendoza, that, no, we don't do meatless Monday ever, ever. We're carnivores. We eat meat. Some of us eat a lot of it. Ryan Warlow says, just applied for the union apprenticeship. Love the videos. Thanks for the inspiration. And drive to be better for yourself and your family. Ryan, at the end of the day, man, that's what it's all about. And I, I learned this. I read a book last year, Seth Godin called The Dip. And my question to everybody watching right now is, if you're not trying to be the very best, why not? Because the very best get paid more. The very best make more money. They keep jobs longer. They get promoted more often. If you're not trying to be the very best, please tell me why not. Why wouldn't you want to be the best? You don't necessarily have to work harder. You, you may have to learn different things, but that's not working harder. It's learning to work smarter. And, and man, Ryan, I appreciate it. I appreciate you putting it in there that way. Ben B says, well, growing a handlebar mustache make a plumber more successful. You know, Ben, I hate to tell you, it will. Uh, if you can grow a cool stash, and it doesn't have to be a handlebar, I mean, horseshoe, handlebar, twisty, what, what, whatever it is, a cool stash will help you out. It, it will make you look, and it'll make you so much more successful. And I like this right here. Den Den says, I'm going to be the best carpenter in town. Look, you can be the best one in your company and make great money. You can be the best one in your town, in your city, in your state, in the nation, in the world, whatever it is. We all have different worlds we live in. Some of us live in the, in the world of our company. Look, I want to be the best plumber right here at the company I work at because I know it's going to make more money for me. I know I'm going to have more fun at it. And you know what? You may say, look, I, I want to be the best plumber in, in the nation. And you join competitions. You know, apprentices. Man, the, the apprentice competitions, if y'all have never seen them, they're phenomenal. I love being around and seeing that and being part of it. So it's pretty cool. Are electricians the least demanding job for the body? Only asking because the average age is like 50. Man, the average age in the, in the trades is like 50. So it's, it's not just the electric, electricians. <clears throat> Plumbers are the same way. I don't know which is going to be less demanding. Electricians probably about like plumbing. You, you can get yourself in a lot of compromising positions. Uh, but man, the, the opportunity, it, it's out there for any of the trades. Just look at it and figure out how to get into it. And, and I promise you it'll help. Sean LeBlanc says, I want to go into plumbing. But where can I go to get experience and your license? Well, first of all, 
First of all, go to my free mini course. Go down the link in the description. Go to the free mini course. That's going to help you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be because you need to figure that out first. Then if you want to be the best, go check out the Trades Academy. That'll help you. But once you figure that part out, now you'll know how to get out and find a job, how to make the most money. But you'll also figure out what trade's best for you. It may be plumbing, it may not. And if you've already got experience, it probably is. But my thing is you need to find out what kind of plumber you want to be or do you even know? Because I didn't when I first got in the trades. And, and I feel bad saying that, but I did not know if I wanted to be commercial or residential, service or new construction. So many opportunities, so many things that I knew nothing about. So that's why I put together the stuff I did. Super Mr. 30 says, greetings from Norway. Good to see you in here. Samo Bands says, I'm a third year steam fitter apprentice, loving it so far. So if you do steam fitting, Samo, where are you located at? Uh, I, I used to know some steam fitters from New York. Elliot Cole, inspiration to me. You're a new apprentice plumber. Good to have you in here. It nuclear says is plumber is plumber if difficult. Look, plumbing is not it's not difficult, but but God, I mean it's not easy. It, it takes learning, and and look, there's not a lot to that. Just learning how to do something over and over. And I've had people tell me I can't get into plumbing because. I have learning difficulties. It's like, well, did you learn to tie your shoes? And they're like, well, yeah, that was easy. No, it wasn't. It just took time. It took time and repetition. It took doing the same thing over and over again. That's what plumbing is. That's what electrical electrical is. That's what roofing and HVAC is. It is learning the things to do over and over until you get good at it. And then you don't even think about it. You just walk in and, man, you know what to do. And you just walk in and knock it out. It's not difficult. Shark Scraper says, learn your way up. I love it, man. I'm going to use that with your permission. Absolutely. Uh, I actually, I think I have that trademarked and I think I own the web domain because I want to do things with it. But yeah, man, I tell everybody, you can learn your way up. Anybody can. And, and guys, this is something I want you to understand. You know, ask while ago, is being a plumber difficult? Man, if it, if it was easy, we, we'd have our, our kindergartner and first grade children out here doing it. It's not easy, but it's not so difficult you can't do it. And, and the good thing is, if you learn to do it and you learn to do it right, you're going to make a great living for the rest of your life. You're going to be able to support your family. You're going to be able to go on vacations. You're going to be able to live the life that you want to live. And to me, man, that's what it's all about. Lamani says, how important is plumbing to society? Like if all the plumbers just went away, what would happen? Man, people would get sick. And I hate to say that, but it's true. That There's a saying called plumbers protect the health of the nation. And if you ask any doctor, they'll tell you, look, plumbers keep people from getting sick by, by having good potable water to drink, making sure the sanitary or sewer water goes away from the house, making sure gas doesn't explode and blow up and kill people. Uh, man, plumbers, it's a, it's a big job. It, it's a good responsibility because I think we make the world a better place. <clears throat> oh, man, it jumped on me again. Isaac says, I want to have my own plumbing business, but I also want to have electrical and HVAC as part of it. Do you think that would be too much? No, I don't. Uh, some of the biggest companies here in Dallas do plumbing, electrical, HVAC, garage doors, uh, man, they, they've added so many things. <clears throat> what I would tell you is, Lamoni, num number one, and, and it's almost confusing as to how I do it, I would probably get my plumbing license first, but then I would get my electrical, then my HVAC, because once you learn electrical, HVAC is pretty easy. I, I, I mean, I'd really start right there. But the good thing is, once you get your plumbing, if you work with like a union or something, somebody that does plumbing and HVAC, you can get hours for your HVAC while you're doing plumbing and learn some stuff. I install, installed as a pipe fitter, we were talking about a while ago. <clears throat> I worked for a company and I was a superintendent and we ran a lot of heating water, chill water, process cooling water, stuff like that. Hooked up a lot of VAV units. This was all out at DFW airport. And the, 
these units were part of the HVAC system. Now, we were really running plumbing to them. So I got credit for those hours. So literally, I basically got my plumbing, I mean, my HVAC certification in about 12 days. Now, I don't do anything with it, but I wish I did. I wish I would have just enough to learn it and get really good at it. I took 12 days, probably five years ago now, learned it all. And actually, it's longer than that. It's probably six years now. Learned it all, never once used it, never went out in the field, never never got in a truck, anything like that. So, man, it just, it all fell apart for me. Isaac Campusta, Campuzano says, I want to have my own plumbing business. Okay, sorry. Oh, I didn't click on you. Sorry about that. Thought I did. Nuclear says, what age did you start plumbing? I started plumbing when I was 16. And actually, I thought about it the other day. I may have been 17. Uh, it was 1980. And man, it, it was a long time ago, but it was fun. Says, how long before you got your plumbing license? You're 15, ready to start learning plumbing trade, but not old enough for a trade school. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. Nuclear, do this. Watch my videos. Learn what you can. Who is the authority having jurisdiction in your area? If you're in Texas, it's the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners. I put the link in a while ago. All right, I'll go ahead and do it again real quick. Here, oh, made it go away. Uh, let's see if it's still up there. No. So here's what I would tell you is watch my videos, learn as much as you can there. Then what you do is go to the authority having jurisdiction in your area. And it may be, if you're in Texas, it's the Texas State Board. Uh, here's a link to their site. Uh, what I will tell y'all is if you see this link in here, click on it, go in there, find out how to get in touch with them and ask them, say, look, why don't y'all let Roger make a video about taking the exam? It would really help us out and see what they say. Ed Ramirez says, been a plumber for 33 years, retired now, love the videos, always new things to learn. Man, and, and I love that, Ed, because that's one thing I teach people is look, and this is part of my program, never stop learning. And, you know, think about it, Ed, most people, when they become plumbers, they're like, look, I've got my license, I'm good, I'm finished, I'm done, it's over. And they never do anything with it. What I'm teaching people is, look, just because you get your license, don't stop learning. You can learn more to help you move up, move up faster and make more money. And that's such a big deal to me. Samo says, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, local 601 steam fitters. Started out the gate at 18, only a year and a half left to go. It's a great choice to join the trades. Any trade is needed. Absolutely. So what I like about that, Samo, when you turn out at 23, if you're still in here, what kind of money are you going to make? Meaning what is scale right now in Milwaukee? Because I, I love being able to share this information with people all around the country just to let them know. Elon, let's kind of stop with that, please. Uh, Alberto Love says, so true, repetition is the key to make great things easy. That's true, make things easy. Great advice. Uh, That's what I say to my kids all the time. It's not hard. It takes time to learn to make it easy. And man, I love the way you put that. It takes time to make it look that easy. And I've got people that ask me all the time, they're like, man, how, how do you do that? How do you do that so good? How do you do that so fast? How do you know? Well, after 41 years, you pick it up and kind of learn to make it look easy. Uh, there's the link right there. Anybody who has learned anything, either from my videos, or if you're thinking about getting in the trades program and you're not sure what all you want to learn, man, we're still trying to put some stuff in there to help people out. So, man, if you do, please go to check that out. And then if you know that you want in there, there's the link for that. And there's the testimonial. Man, we're all over it. Is there a lot of women in plumbing, Unicorn Pug? Yes, there is. And I think it's great. Now, there's probably more in Canada. I've been working a lot with some people up in Canada here lately. And I've got to tell you that the neat thing about it is Women in the trades can do very well. They've got to get in with the right mindset, though, and, and understand, look, guys are pains in the butt, but they can get in and do really, really good. I like this. 
Martin Annette's 2010 says, I'm a union electrician in Chicago. Love your videos. Thank you so much. Uh, I used to have a real good friend that was involved very heavily with the plumbers union up there. So I appreciate that. Uh, I know, unicorn plug in that, right? Uh, Reg Phillips, Oregon Union Plumbing Apprentice here, local 290. If you had to move to a different state, where would you go? Well, number one, I'm in Texas, so I wouldn't go anywhere. I love it here. Uh, and you're up in Oregon. That's got to be tough. Uh, and, and all I mean by that is it's cold up there. I'm down here. I, I was watching a deal. Those of y'all that hadn't seen me, man, we do a lot over on TikTok. Go over there and search for at Roger Wakefield. Uh, and man, I, w I was skimming through some stuff the other day and somebody commented and looked some stuff. And this is somebody from Antarctica. And they were like, it's not minus 65 degrees out here. And i tell you what, I would not want to be in Chicago. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking down South Chicago. I would not want to be up in like North Dakota, New York, anywhere where it ices and freezes and stuff like that. Man, guys, it's it's nice out here. It's uh, it, it's 80 degrees here today, 83, something like that. Matter of fact, it is. Oh, oh, this is funny. It's 78 degrees here right now. So, man, it's a beautiful day here. Well, Maybe a little rainy, but... Uh, Brownettes 2010 says scale for electricians in Chicago is 51 an hour for journeyman. So guys, think about that right now. What that means is if you get into the electricians union in Chicago, in Chicago, and I've got links to it to help people get into the IBEW. It's in the getting in the trades program. That means you're going to start out right out of high school or as soon as you can get into the apprentice training program, 25, 50 an hour. Okay, that's a fifty thousand dollar a year job. That's a thousand dollars a week once you get out of out of high school. Tell me the trades aren't good, and, and yet we got people going to college, blowing a fortune, and getting out, owing money, and, and not even working in their own field, not what they studied for. It blows my mind. Says uh, nuclear says, okay, do you think I could order a book for different kinds of pops and learn them? Yeah, you can learn it from books. Uh, I've got the UPC study guide that I think is phenomenal. I've got a link to it down in my description. But but here's the thing. First of all, try to, you're underage. Go to half price books and try to get try to get some used books there on plumbing, and try to get newer ones because you want to learn as much as you can. What I like about the UPC study guide that's what I teach people to take the exam with, and it, it helps a lot. Jorge Garcia, up, oh, and it just jumped on me. Man, I was just fixing to click on your name. Jorge Garcia says, have you ever heard of the Wyson mechanical test? Had to take it to get in the union? Failed it. Also looking for a way to study it so I can retake the test. I have not. But what I'm going to do is come over here and put it in, W-I-E-S-E-N. So it, well, it says Wasson, that one doesn't. The Wasson Technical Assessment. You know what? I will check into that. I've got it pulled up here. Jorge, I appreciate it. There are things online where it says uh, there's test preparation sites and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely go over and check it out because I, I think, number one, I, I think things like that are good. We test more on... culture you know are they going to be a good fit for our company are they good people are they going to lot of people cheat people steal from people or are they going to come in and try to learn and do good and that's what we're really worried about huh. when i first started in plumbing i made 475 an hour <clears throat> okay so there we go samos the scale for journeyman steam fitter here is 4879 so see both of them are right around 50 bucks an hour and guys, I know that Dallas is one of the lower paying unions at 35. So I get it. Unicorn Pug says, good. I really want to get into it to help others and your family. So Unicorn Pug, I'm assuming you're female. Uh, do you know what trade you want to get into? Just out of curiosity. And have you done anything like the getting in the trades program where it helps you figure out what kind of trade would be best for you? 
And have you done the mini course where you understand what different aspects of the trades there are? Rehockey HD says, I go to a trade school and I'm learning plumbing and I'm out in the field now actually doing the real jobs, roughing in homes, doing drains, black steel. Got to tell you, I love this trade so much. Man, it is phenomenal. Uh, Trey Milton says, I want a Rogers Vans on 75 a couple of weeks ago. How do you know it was my van? Because I know how you know, but I'm just asking, how do you know it was my van? Uh, that's pretty good. Trey Milton now says 77. No, it was 75. And I know that because we don't have a 77 up here. Felix Rodriguez says, uh, hello, Mr. Wakefield, currently in the fire protection industry. Uh, Felix, I used to work in the fire protection industry. I worked as a sprinkler system installer, and, and it was copper, so we did a lot of brazing all day, every day. It was pretty good. Richard Chris is thinking about getting in a trade, not getting any younger at 26. Do you really have to deal with as much poop as people say? And see, man, you, you ain't been in here long because I've been saying almost this entire show, we don't hardly ever have to deal with it. It's not as bad as y'all think. Yeah, Sam, Sambo, Sambo, I love this. All my schooling was paid for debt-free. Guys, that's the thing about the trades. You get in and people teach you the trades. You learn it. You do not have to go to a, a vocational technical school. You don't have to go to college. You can literally get a job in the trades, join the union, whatever, and grow and learn. Rehockey HD is 16. Good, man. It's, it's a perfect time to learn. And then here's another one, Insane McLean. How are we doing? Good to have you in here. Talk about another YouTube channel to go over and check out. That will do it right there. George Phillips says, hey, Roger, good afternoon. Have a quick question. Which plumbing sector earns the most amount of income, commercial or residential? You know, George, it, it really, and, and, and I hate keeping answering the same question the same way, but guys, it depends on what you like the most. If I get in commercial, and I work my butt off and I move up to be one of the best superintendents in my world, whether, whether it's in my company, in my city, in, in the state, whatever, I can make good money. I can, with bonuses and all, I can make $150,000, $200,000 a year. Residential, you know what? If I'm a good sales technician, sales plumber at a residential service company that's busy and has a good system set up for commission and bonuses and things like that, and I can make 200 to 250,000 there. What do you want to do? Because if I hate sales, if I hate residential, I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to like it. If I love residential and I'm doing commercial and I don't want to run big jobs, I'm not going to like it. People look at what you would like to do because if you figure that part out, and that's why the very first thing on the trades academy, getting in the trades is what trade is right for you. Because if you're in the wrong trade, it's never going to work, and you're not going to make good money at it. Morning, that's 2010. Says here's a good route for trades. Prior service, Marine Corps veteran. Any veteran can use the post 9/11 GI Bill. Join a trade. It basically gives you a journeyman's wage as a first year apprentice. <clears throat> and I had a I had an apprentice. I think used his GI Bill for almost two years while he was going to school at night. Pretty daggum good idea. And I love that they'll do that with it. Reg Phillips says, now for the real question, do you tape and dope or dope and tape? Uh, it is always tape and dope. Chanel James says, hello there. I know this might not be the place. I want to ask, how do I develop a relationship with plumbers so I feel comfortable? Am I being told the right comfortable? I am being told the right thing. Now, if you mean with comfortable with plum, comfortable with plumbers you're working with, are you in the trade? Do you want to be in the trade? You know, Chanel. One of the things is, is learn the lingo, learn the words they're using, learn why they do what they do, and, and you can get in, communicate with them, and, and you can actually do really, really well. Plumber and steam fitter, it, it's it's a different job depending on where you're at in the country, and I say that because there are actually steam fitters up north where they pipe steam into houses. Down here, man, we do, we can do, the plumbers can do steam fitting because they do the screw pipe. I, I did steam fitting down in Austin. I built the uh, Four Seasons Hotel and Resort and did steam fitting in the laundry room there. 
Chanel says, I am a PhD thinking of getting training as a plumber so I can fix your own stuff. Look, man, I love that. Uh, I think that's fantastic. You can probably learn enough to fix your own stuff on YouTube. Uh, Chanel, I, I teach a lot of how to on my YouTube channel. So it, it really could be very, very good for you. Nuclear says, and is the plumbing the best trade to learn? It depends on you. Uh, I hate to say it, but there's, and just like your next one, is joining a union a smart choice? It depends on you. Uh, you've got to figure out where you want to be in the trade. What kind of person do you want to be in the trade? And, and man, I can tell you, look, man, a residential plumber non-union's greatest job on earth. You may love being a commercial construction union plumber and say, oh my gosh, life has never been better. It's different from all of us. That's why going through that free mini course will help you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. Uh, huh. Do you clean your tools after a really master job or have the new guy do it? And it depends on how busy I am and what all's going on. If I'm swamped, I may say, hey man, look, I need you to do this. If things are going good, I do not mind cleaning my own tools. It's my opinion on crimp on fittings. Your brother, in law works for a federal prison. They use it all the time. You know, in a federal prison, they probably really don't care if they have much flow restriction or not. That's one of the biggest problems we run into in residential is the plumbers go in and build these new houses. They use press fittings all the way through. Then you cannot get enough flow at the furthest shower back or something like that. And I think it's sad. There's the link to the Trades Academy. Get in now. That's what it's all about. Third year pipe fitter here. I am a sweeping core catching fire watch. Man, I get it. Hey, fire watch is a big deal. Don't 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 take it lightly. Netter Bashai says, last week I got accepted to both pipe fitter union and plumbing union in New Jersey. If I want to move to Texas from New Jersey, can I move in the second or third year to a union in Texas, or do you have to finish all five in New Jersey? You can actually transfer. What you'll have to do is contact your union, have your union contact the Texas union you want to move to. And if they've got room, if they've got a position, yeah, they, they will definitely get you in there. Not bot. Guys, if, if you've got any feedback, if you've learned anything from me, if I've helped you, please go over here and give me some feedback. Fill this out. We've got another link in there for a survey. And what I'll tell you is that what we're giving away, and I think it's the the, the round table. Uh, but anyway, we're giving away stuff. If, you, if you've learned anything here, you like it, go fill it out. We're, we're going to be giving some stuff away. Carter William F. Cody says, have you ever sent an apprentice out to the truck for a pipe stretcher or a left-handed pipe wrench? You know, I haven't. I, I just, I'm one of these people... I would probably let it go too long and it, and it wouldn't be good. Uh, so my whole thing is I, I just decide, look, I call that horseplay. Let's don't do it on the job. We can jack with somebody maybe that really deserves it. Like if they're one of those smarty, look, man, I know everything there is to know. Yeah, I'd probably have fun with somebody like that. Insane McLean says, are you going to Vid Summit this year? Yes, I am. Uh, can't wait to go, as a matter of fact. Uh, actually, I'm speaking at Vid Summit this year, so I'm really excited about that. Austin Duena says, hey, Roger, messaging all the way from Guam. Always miss these feeds. Wanted to share your YouTube. Help me find my passion in plumbing. Thank you so much. Austin, number one, man, I love that. If you'll look, click on the link for the, the, the testimonial, for feedback, for the survey, anything at all like that, Austin, man, thank you. I appreciate you just letting me know. It's people like you, the reason I do what I do. So I do appreciate it. Gutsy says, if you're from San Antonio, the PHCC apprenticeship program is something definitely recommend. They teach you a lot, make it easy to get your license. Look, I think PHCC Texas is a good organization, not just San Antonio, all over Texas. Uh, I know a lot of those people, so it, it really is, it, it's a good organization. They're a good group, and, and I have nothing bad to say about them. Chanel James says, this is so informative. Thank you. I was scared to ask my question, but you made it easy. Uh, I think I'm going to subscribe so I can learn more. Well, number, number one, Chanel, you should subscribe. 
Matter of fact, if you're if you're here and you like what you're seeing, man, subscribe down there, ring the bell. That way you get the notifications. But Chanel, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Man, I got all the way through the questions and, and man, I got about nine minutes left. This is good. Uh, I know that there's a link pinned up to the very top. Uh, and, and it's the survey. What I want to say is, look, if you're in here and you've learned anything, or if you're in here and you're thinking about getting into the trades, any of the trades, if you are thinking about getting into the trades, go to the survey, fill it out. Let me get some information from you. Let me get some feedback. And that's all it is, is feedback. I, I'm trying to figure out things that people want to learn that maybe I'm not looking at. Meaning, I want to tell people how to get in the trades, how to make the most money, how to make the most money, the things they need to know, and how to help them grow. When, when I help people get in the trades, I don't want them to just become an okay plumber. I want to teach them the things that they need to learn to be the very best, the things that they need to learn to grow and, and really make good money in here. <clears throat> Sean Strong, my brother, and leave a like on the video. Uh, absolutely. You know, if, if you do, and, and man, we, we've actually, man, I, Sean, I've got a thumbs down here, and they told me you did that. I'm just, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Uh, nuclear says I learned a lot and think about becoming a plumber, man. Number one, nuclear, you're, you're at a good, at, good age. You're, you're young enough that you can still say, you know, look, I, I've got different ideas and options and thinking about this and that. But what I want to tell you is figure out what trade is best for you. It starts there. Then figure out what different types of the trade that there are. And, and Sean and I have, have had this question and answer before, neither one of us knew when we got in the trades what kind of plumber we wanted to be. I didn't know the difference between commercial and residential. I didn't know the difference between residential and new construction. I just knew I wanted to be a plumber. And when I got in, luckily for me, I was with good people and I learned good things, but it would have been very easy for me to get into a job I didn't like and say, hey man, I'm never gonna be a plumber. I'm, I don't like that. But luckily I got in with the right people they taught me about learning and learning more, and, and it really has been a pretty good deal. <clears throat> Steve says, with the drought going on out west, do you think we'll have more gray water applications that will flow water to flush the toilet? It, yes, Steve, I do. Uh, and the good thing is Green Plumbers USA is actually out in California. And I think that, and I really think they should be doing a lot to, to grow and get more people's attention. That, that's another one. Uh, Y'all reach out to them. We're going to have fun today. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put another link in here today. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, I want y'all to go over here too. We'll just have fun. I like this. Yeah, y'all go over there. That's Green Plumbers USA. Y'all go check it out. It'll pop up here in just a second. Uh, go over there and check it out because, number one, they're all about water conservation, which to me is a really big deal. And they're the reason why I do a lot of the things I do. But go over there and send them a message and say, hey, man, I heard about y'all through Roger Wakefield. And, man, y'all should really talk to him. They know me. Uh, they know I love what they do. It'll just be good to let them see that uh, I'm giving them a shout out. Don't know why that did that. Where did that go? Bam, bam, bam. Miles Hunnell says, hello, Roger. I come from plumbing in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. That's when I started watching you almost a year ago. Appreciate all you do and the informative videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Georgia Davis, good to see you in here. Tradesman Plumber says, is there a way to get the same training from a union for open shop? You know, there is, uh, and, and I don't know that it'll be exactly the same, but to be honest, uh, and somebody mentioned them a while ago, if you'll contact the companies in your area, find out if there's a PHCC in your area. If there is, PHCC has a good training program. I really do like them. 
So there that one is. Shasta Trunks says, always give you a thumbs down. That way you know there's room for improvement. Brother, that's, that's why I love you. I appreciate everything you do. Kind of rough on me, but you know, is what it is. <clears throat> All right, so there's the link. You do plumbing right? Yes, we sure do. We try every single time we walk out. <clears throat> Tell the audience what makes an apprentice plumber stand out. I, I can actually make that really, really easy for you. If you want to be a great apprentice plumber, learn to think ahead of the journeyman you work with. Meaning when that journeyman, and, and, and guys, I've had it happen to me. I've been up on a ladder hooking up a fan coil unit and I got to the point where I'd use my fittings and I'm looking and I needed like, you know, three more nineties and yada, yada, yada. And I look down, I'm gonna tell him, hey, go get me. And he's literally standing there with them in his hand, holding them up, already cleaned. When you can start thinking ahead of the journeyman you're working with, you're doing good as an apprentice. And it jumped on me one more time. Christian Belterson Schmedsrud. I hope I got that right. Schmedsrud. Hello from Norway. Good to have you in here. Miles Hunter says, I live in Rhode Island, now working for a FG Lees and Son, full-time mechanical crew, learning from fifth-generation plumbers, still family-owned. Thank you for all your support for the trade. Look, man, I love the trade. I think, I think plumbing is the greatest trade in the world for me. But I think all the trades are great, and me recruiting to help get people in, it does make it work. But Miles, Colonel F. Cody says, William F. Cody says, all kidding aside, we need more hardworking people in the trades. Amen. <laughs> Georgia Davis says, have you ever got dirty or wet doing plumbing? Yep. Quite often, as a matter of fact. Uh, Ryan says, best plumber on YouTube right here. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, hey, y'all are great for my ego. I may stay alone a little bit longer. Uh, no offense, but handymen do more stuff. Uh, Buddy Miller, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you, but that they should get a license so they can do a lot more stuff legally. Uh, I would rather be a master at one thing and be able to make more money to do that than just say, look, I can do all kinds of things. Uh, look, nothing against handymen. I think handymen have a great place. I think that there's a lot of things that they can do that, that, look, I don't need to do. And as a plumber, I'm like, look, you know what? If you'll call a handyman, they can take care of this, 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 and this. You really don't want your plumber doing it. But, you know, buddy, I'll tell you this. I don't like it when handymen, yeah, quality over quantity. Uh, I don't like it when handymen do things they're not licensed to do, gas lines that can explode, uh, install water lines and there be a leak and then people have mold problems and things like that. And buddy, look, there are some good plumbers out there, so I'm not bashing you. Please don't take it wrong. But I think when it comes to areas like Texas that requires a license, man, if you're licensed, not licensed, don't do it. Thomas says quantity over quality or quality over quantity. Sorry about that. I said it right while ago. Thomas, thank you. And Georgia Davis, yes, I have always been a plumber. So guys, I am fixing to get out of here. Uh, Bobby G, you know, to be honest, I don't know why they call it the trades. Uh, So I can find what well, it didn't really say. It, it just said a tradesman is a skilled worker that specializes in a particular trade. I have no idea. Uh, that's pretty good, though. I like that. So, guys, here's the deal. I appreciate every one of you being here. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you got something out of it today. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you really liked it, please go down there, hit that share button, share it with somebody. If you tag me in it on other social media platforms, and pretty much you can find me as at Roger Wakefield or underscore at underscore Roger Wakefield. If you'll tag me when you share it, 
I will definitely give you a shout out and I do appreciate it. I am trying to help more people get into the trades and to me, that's what it's all about. So if you like it, you can head over and check out the tradesacademy.com. Let me know what you think. There's still a link to the top to the survey. If you don't mind jumping over there and filling it out, that also helps. So guys, thank you for everything you do. I do appreciate you being here. By the way, how's the sound? Uh, I know I asked earlier and we've got a different mic on today. I'm trying to do something because I've got to do a nationwide TV show or a bunch of TV shows on Ju July the 8th. Uh, I'll be doing morning TV shows all across the country. So do me a favor and please tell me. Yeah, Thomas Smith says the sound is good. Fantastic. We normally use the, the, the big road mics and I do. I love those. So this one here is a little bit different, but we're having fun. Uh, and you know what, but buddy, that's a good way to put it. And I like that. I respect the art and hard work that go on both sides, but yes, handyman should have a license, but very well put. I, I do. I like the way you put that. Reg Phillips says, thank you. You're awesome. Have a great night. Georgia Davis says, bye. I enjoyed it. Sound is good. Sound is good. Thank you so much. Sean Smith is still talking bad about me. No, he's actually, guys, jump over to the subreddit. Uh, and I'll actually see if I can find this real quick and I'll pull this one down and put this one up right there. There's the link to the subreddit. Go over and check it out, guys. Uh, Sean is pretty much in charge of things over there and makes everything look good. So I love it. Thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed something today. If you did, please tell somebody about it and hopefully we can help get more people into the trades. If you didn't, man, send me a message. Let me know why. Let me know what I can do better. Like Sean says, there's always room for improvement. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and we've got another video coming up in about 10 minutes. Hang around, check it out. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed. Thank you.